Welcome back to the second part about the different effect handlers in Jetpack Compose. In this video we will see how the disposable effect effect handler works. It's kind of similar to the launched effect one but provides additional logic when it comes to cleaning up some resources or freeing up some resources. So I've prepared this little example here which is a composable function in Android Studio. We have uh, some print light statements so that we always know what's currently going on. Then we will have a disposable effect here with the key true so that it gets only triggered on the first composition and we have also this on this post function which gets triggered when the composition leaves and down here we will also have a text composable and another print line statement so that we know or we can see when the disposable effect is actually triggered because this effect handler also triggers after a successful composition and then we have up here a really really simple UI. We have a changeable value which is false by default and on the button here we can toggle this value um, and depending on this current value we will show this disposable effect composable. And yeah let me quickly uh, show you this in a practical way. So let's start the application and look at the log cat. Now we, we see nothing because this changed value here is false but when I click on toggle then you can see the print statements so it's entering the composition first and then after the composition the disposable effect actually triggers so enters the effect scope and now when we click on this toggle button again then this disposable effect composable will leave the composition so as you can see now and now you can see that do the cleanup a print statement because this on this post function is always triggered when the composition leaves. The second possibility when this on this post function triggers is when this key here changes. So when this key here changes, then on this post is called first, and after that it enters in the effect scope again. Let me quickly show you this. And for that we will remove this disposable effect composable outside this if conditioner. And here we will have a value of type boolean and then we can pass our changeable value here. And the key will be our value now. And let me quickly restart this. So entering the composition after the composition entered the effect scope. This, uh, this one we've already seen. But when I click on toggle now, then you can see that do the cleanup comes first and then entering the effect scope again. So when I click on toggle again, then you can see that always the cleanup will get executed first and after this it enters again in the disposable effect scope. So this is kind of powerful when you allocate some resources inside your disposable effect and need to free them up or clean them up when the key changes or when the composition leaves. So as you can see, the disposable effect works kind of similar to the launched effect one when it comes to triggering and execution time. So after every first composition, which was successful, or when a specific key changes. And we also get a coroutine scope inside this disposable effect scope here. So this was also the same in the launched effect. The only difference now is this on this post function to do some cleanup, to do some logic when the key changes or when the composition leaves. And now let's have a look at a practical example, because right now these are just some uh, senseless print line statements to uh, follow along what's currently going on. But uh, yeah, what when to use the disposable effect. And for that, uh, I will use the a classic example, which is also in the Google documentation. And it's also the most common one, I guess, at least I'm using this in almost every project. So when it comes to observing lifecycle methods or different life cycles in Jetpack Compose, then we can make use of this disposable effect. It's like the disposable effect is really, really made for, up for this. So we can say, well, lifecycle owner is equal to local lifecycle owner dot current. And so we get the current lifecycle owner and we can also pass this lifecycle owner as the key here. Because we want to remove the observen, observation of this lifecycle owner on the dispose function and we add the observation 
in the disposable effect block. So in here we can say well observer is equal to lifecycle event observer and in here we get uh, the observer as the first value but we don't need this we need the event and uh, in this observe function here we can then say event if event is equal to lifecycle dot event dot maybe for example uh, on start then we can execute some logic i will just uh, print this here on start and now below here we can say lifecycle owner dot lifecycle at observer and then we can pass our observer and right now we just add this observer to our lifecycle owner and if the composable for example if this composable here leaves the composition and enter the composition again and for example does this like 50 times then we would have added 50 observers to our lifecycle owner and this would be a really really bad practice uh, i didn't try this out what actually happens but um, uh, yeah i think uh, unpredictable things can happen then so we should really remove this observer when the disposable effect composable which we have here leaves the composition so in here we can say lifecycle owner dot lifecycle remove observer and pass our observer again and then every, everything is clear if the uh, compose if, if the composable leaves the composition then the observer will get removed and after it re-enters the composition then another observer another object here gets passed to the lifecycle owner as an observer and uh, the same thing for changes in our lifecycle owner so if this key changes if our lifecycle owner changes we should also do the same thing we should remove the observer and add the observer to the new lifecycle owner then. Another example for a side effect which should be handled by the disposable effect effect handler would be registering a broadcast receiver. Maybe you know the method like context.registerReceiver and then we could pass a broadcast receiver for a specific broadcast intent. And if we would state like this, then this register receiver method would be always called when the key here changes so maybe in this example we would have another key but if the specific key changes or if this composable enters the composition and maybe we would end up with registering like 100 broadcast receivers and this wouldn't be good so we could use the on this post function here and in here we would simply say context.unregister receiver and pass our broadcast again and then we would have always just registered one broadcast receiver all right as a little recap when you should use the disposable effect effect handler you should use it when you have a side effect when you have some kind of registering or adding observers or something like this like we have seen in the examples which needs to be unregistered or removed again or when you allocate some resources which needs to be removed or cleaned up after that so use this effect when you have some clean up work to do after uh, compositional leaves or if a specific key changes if this is not the case if you don't no need to do some clean up work then you can use launched effects because they work kind of similar when it comes to execution time and uh, key changes execution and yeah, if you don't have any clean up work, then you can use launched effect. In the next video, we will have a closer look at remember coroutine scope and remember update state. These two effect handlers, especially the last one, remember update state, is a little bit more complicated, but also a very interesting one.